M2 is a method for blindfolded solving for only the edges, and it's a little bit more complicated than the most simple method that we normally teach for beginners, which is the old Pachman method. So if you have not already learned the blind solving concepts from the old Pachman method already, I will not be going over them again in this video. This will be only for M2, so check the description for the link to the previous tutorial. With that being said, everything that I go over in this video will be with the assumption that you already know the blind solving concepts from the old Pachman method. And another thing you need to know, and if you don't know, make sure you get familiar with it for this video, is the SPEFS lettering scheme, which I will also put in the description. But basically it goes like this, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. So it's just a letter for each of the stickers on the cube. And also I will be doing all the scrambles and solutions with white top and green front. So now that I assume you know how to do the old Pachman method, I will be drawing parallels from that method to the M2 method. So I will talk about something from old Pachman and say how it relates to M2. So you really don't have to learn many new things. It's a very, very similar method. So normally for the old Pachman method to swap pieces, you will be doing T-perms with your buffer piece, buffer sticker right here, and your swapping sticker right here. So you'll be moving pieces over to here to swap them, and then you'll swap it with whatever's in here. So M2 is very, very similar. Instead, your buffer piece will be over here, this sticker, and the swapping sticker will be over here. So you'll make cycles exactly the same way, but for old Pachman, you normally start by looking at this sticker to see where the next piece needs to go. Instead, for M2, you will be looking at this sticker to see where the next piece needs to go. So as a quick example of how to do a cycle in M2 compared to old Pachman, I'm going to show you this specific example. So we're gonna go first here to L, then L needs to go to over here, which is T, T needs to go to here, which is J, and J needs to come back here to L. That finishes the cycle. So before we do this with M2, I wanna show you all the rules of what we do with old Pachman to make sure you memorize these rules as well for M2. They're exactly the same rules, just with different buffer and swapping locations. So this is exactly the same thing. For old Pachman, uh, here's the buffer, and here is the swapping spot. So what's important for making setup moves is that these corners get swapped and this edge is our buffer, so we make sure we do not touch these three pieces when we make our setup moves. But other than that, we can touch anything we want. So when we put L over to here, we can just do L prime, do the swap, and then L. Now for T, we have to make sure that we preserve these three pieces, so we do something like this. And then undo the setup moves. Then for J, uh, same thing, we don't wanna to touch these pieces, so we do something like that. And then uh, next we go back to L, so just like the beginning. All right, so now let's do the same thing with M2. So with M2, remember that our buffer piece is over here and the swapping sticker is over here. And since when we do M2 to swap these two, we'll move everything in the M slice. So that means that we have to preserve everything in the M slice when we make our setup moves. So going from L to over here, we cannot just do L prime U because that breaks whatever was over here in the M slice. So that does not work as the setup move. Instead, you can do U prime L prime U and that preserves everything in the M slice except it puts the desired piece over here. So now we can do M2 to swap them and undo the setup moves. So the cube looks a bit jumbled right now, but let's just continue and see what happens. So next we go to T, which again, we can't do R prime U prime because that will break whatever was over here, it'll move. So we can do U, R prime, U prime, M2, and undo the setup moves. All right, next we have J, which can be done like this. And then back to L, so the same thing. So it also solved the same thing. So really we're doing the exact same concepts. You just have to use a different buffer piece, a different swapping location, and different setup moves. But I do think the setup moves are pretty easy to figure out. There are some that may be up to four moves, but you'll see some of those in my example solves at the end. Now, if you have a good understanding of the method at this point, then you might be thinking that everything in old Pachman is just a harder version of M2. Why do we have to do a T-perm when we could just do an M2? And the reason is because M2 has a few exceptions. Think about how you would swap to anything that's already in the M slice. So you might think, oh, well, I can just move it over to here, but you have to preserve this piece. So that just conceptually doesn't even work out. So the answer is you can swap to C, but I don't really want to explain all the, the details behind it. Maybe look at the algorithm, what it does, and you can figure it out. But there is an algorithm for it, and there's an algorithm for the four exception cases. 
and that is C, I, W, and S. Now, as an example, I'll show the algorithm to C, but remember C, I, S, and Q will all be in the description. So C goes like this. And it's hard to tell what happened, but maybe as a challenge to yourself, you can try to figure out why. Also, just a quick note about A and Q, which is this piece. So A is over here, and to swap with A, you just do M2. So it's exactly what you think it is. The buffer goes to the swapping location with just M2. No setup moves. But for Q, it's a little bit more complicated to come up with a setup move. It's exactly the same concept, but you'll need a lot of moves. So I'll put that in the description as well, and I'll also show you right now. So swapping to Q, the setup moves can be done like this. And then you do M2 and then you undo the setup moves. Okay, so regarding C, I, S, and W, there is actually another exception that goes with them, and that is, during your memorization, if you memorize C, I, S, or Q as the second letter as a part of a pair, then you have to swap to the opposite sticker instead. W is the opposite of C, C is the opposite of W, and also I and S are opposites. Now, this might be really confusing, but I'll show you an example of it right now. And in the second example solve, I will also have this as more examples. So I'm just gonna do an example cycle right now. Let's go from D to C to B back to D. Now, if you look at that, you know that should be a U perm. So just for reference, it's gonna look like this when we finish. All right, so let's do that. We go to D, which you can set up with a sexy move like this. M2, reverse setup. Then we're gonna go to C. And just trust me on this, because it's the second one in the pair, we're gonna actually go to W. So W goes like this. You can find the algorithm in the description. Then we're gonna go to B. Then back to D. And we actually made the same thing. And we never swapped with C, we only swapped with W because it came second in the pair. Okay, and I'm gonna show another example of how that works. So. And this time we're going to do the exact same cycle, but it's going to go C, B, D, C. So the first time in C, B, it's going to be the first letter of the pair, so we'll go to C. And the second time after C, B is going to be D, C. It's the second letter in the pair, so the next time we're going to go to W instead. So this may seem all really confusing, but please just remember it as a rule. And let's go over how that works. So C, like this, in the description, you'll find the algorithm. Then B... D, and then this C comes second in the pair, the pair being D, C, so we're going to go to W instead. And we made the same thing. So if you're going to C, sometimes it's C, sometimes it's W, depending on which spot it comes in as a pair. And then similarly, the same thing would happen for I and S. If you're still confused, remember to check out the second example solve where I will have examples of this. And like I said in the beginning of the video, some of these things might not make sense if you have not seen my old tutorial. But even if you haven't seen it, if you've learned the method Old Pachman, you should be comfortable with all of this, except for maybe the lettering scheme, which I have in the description so you can follow along. And now I will have two example solves with M2. The first one will be very straightforward, and the second one will be a little bit more complicated, but together they will cover all of the points you need to know with M2, assuming you already know the Old Pachman method. So let's go to the example solves now. Okay, so this first example solve is going to be a little bit simpler and there won't be many special cases. So let's get started. As usual, we look at the buffer sticker first, which is this one, and that goes over to here, which is M, and then this goes to O, which goes to W, and then goes to E, which goes to C, and then L, and then X, and then A, and then R, and then that's actually the buffer piece again, but then we're actually not done because you'll notice this one is flipped. So we never went to this one yet, so this can be its own cycle. So what we'll do next is get this one over here, which is J, and then go over to here to put it back where it was. So that's P. And then that completes our memorization. Now the special cases that I talked about before, uh, where you have either C or I or W or S, anytime you have those and it comes second in the pair, then you have to switch it to its opposite. But now we don't have to worry about that because we don't have one of those cases. However, in the next example solve, we will have one of those cases. So now let's look at how we would do this. So first of all, M, setup moves like this. M2, undo setup moves. And then O. 
w, which is just the normal w like this, and then e like this, c, l, x, a, r, j, and then p. So if you're ever doing your solves and you get stuck on the setup moves, you can come back here and check what I did, but I think most of the setup moves are pretty straightforward. Maybe only uh, like h and n will be not straightforward, but I'll show those in the next solve. All right, now you'll notice that it's not actually solved. The m slice is off by one, and that's because we have parity. So now we'll do the parity algorithm, which is like this. And then now all the edges are solved, except for these two. And that's because for old Pachman, you're going to be swapping these two over and over. So you're going to do an odd number of swaps into this parity for corners. These will be swapped an odd number of times, and it'll go back to being solved. So that's it. For the scramble, as usual, we're going to look at the buffer sticker first, which is the one over here, and that is orange-blue, so it's going to go over to here, the orange side. And then that's the letter H. Then this piece, uh, the green sticker, is going to come over here, which is the letter I. And then we just continue. So this goes to here, which is E, and then F, and then B, yep, and then O, S, A, uh, G, N, P, and then this is our buffer piece, so then we stop the cycle. And this actually gets every single piece on the cube. So the entire edge solution is just one cycle and we didn't need to break into any new cycles. Now let's split up the memorization into pairs and have a look. So remember what I said about this location here and this location over here. So for the letters I, C, W, and S, so just remember if one of these letters comes second in the pair, you have to switch to the opposite letter. So the opposite of I is S, the opposite of S is I, and then C and W are opposites. And then now we can go into execution and you'll see it all works out in the end. All right, so first of all, we go to H. So setup moves are like this, M2, and then undo setup moves. Next we go to S, which should be I, but is the second one in the pair. So instead we do S. So that is like this. All right, now E, um, F, B, and then O. All right, and now we go to S, and since it comes first in the pair, then it's still S. So then we do the same algorithm as the S from before. And then A, which is just M2, and then G here. So like this, so, uh, M2, and then reverse setup moves. N, which is here, no, sorry, here. And then P, which is here. All right, so now you can see it's not actually done, and that's because just like before, there's an odd number of edges, so we have parity. It goes like this. All right, now you can see that everything is solved, except, of course, for these two edges. And that makes sense because if you're going to do old Pachman for corners, then you're going to have these two swapping back and forth when you do what's almost like a Y perm to swap the corners. So this is to prepare for old Pachman corners. And since there will be an odd number of corner swaps as well, then these will end up being swapped and you'll have a solved cube. And that's it for this tutorial. And with all blindfolded tutorials, I know there will be questions, so please leave questions in the comments or message me on Facebook. Link is in the description, and I will be happy to answer your question. Also, please subscribe if you want to see more tutorials on whatever, and if you want me to make a specific tutorial, you can leave a suggestion in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.